Welcome back. Um, today we're going to take a look at some Stockfish code. Um, it's the 10th anniversary since Stockfish 1.0 was released. Um, so as we usually do, let's start with Kausei. This life is yours. Some of it was given to you. You made the rest you made yourself. Interesting. Food for thought. So, um, yeah. So let's take a look at uh, what just got released here. The Stockfish 10. The official release version of Stockfish 10 has been released. And I've merged it into my fork and that's what we're looking at. But yeah, this is the official release thanks to Stefan Nicolette. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, this is also the 10th anniversary version of the Stockfish project, which started exactly 10 years ago when uh, Stockfish 1.0 was released. I wish to extend a huge thank you to all contributors and edit authors in our amazing community. Um, and just to show that he's not making this up, uh, not that he would, not that there's any reason to, uh, but we're going to spend a couple minutes, at least, um, just talking about what Stockfish is. Um, yeah, also, feel free to support. Um, I know Giving Tuesday has elapsed, but feel free to support the Wikipedia project. I'm not logged in at the moment, and that's okay. Um, Stockfish is a new, is a free and open source universal chess interface engine available for various desktop and mobile platforms. Developed by Marco Castalpa, Juna Kiliski, Gary Linscott, and Tord Romstad, with many contributors from a community of open source developers. Um, as you saw, Stefan Nicolette did the final Stockfish 10 commit there, so he's also a maintainer of the project that came on board more recently. Uh, it's ranked first or near the top of the. Yeah, you're familiar with it. You've heard of Stockfish. What you might not have heard of. I mean, you probably haven't looked at its feature set, and that supports up to 512 CPU threads and multi-process systems, because you probably don't have a 512 CPU machine just sitting in your backyard somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's got a pretty large 128 gigabyte transposition table, uh, and recently it's, they have developed support for 7-man Zizigy uh, table bases or Zizigy bases. So it's possible now to look up um, results uh, with perfect play for a very, very large number of positions. And Stockfish takes advantage of that if you've got the hard drive space for it, but that's not really, we'll, we'll get there eventually, but in terms of me trying to cover this stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was integrated into Stockfish four years ago. Um, and Stockfish originated from Glaurung, the open source chess engine that was created by Tord Romstad and initially released in 2004. And four years later, Marco Castaba, inspired by that strong open source engine, decided to fork the project and named it Stockfish because it was produced in Norway and it was cooked in Italy. Yeah, you might, uh, so yeah, we got Castaba being Italian and uh, Romstad being Norwegian. Now, you might remember that recently um, we had an, another interesting match or pairing between an Italian and a Norwegian. Uh, it was quite exciting, so it, it's just beautiful how this all lines up. Um, yeah, so the first version, Stockfish 1.0, was released in November 2008. Uh, for a while, new ideas and code changes were transferred between the two programs in both directions until Romstad uh, decided to discontinue in favor of Stockfish, which at the time was the more advanced engine. Uh, the last Glaurung update, version 2.2, was released in December 2008. Around 2011, Romstad decided to abandon his involvement with Stockfish and preferred to spend time on his new iOS chess app. So this, all of this, this is amazing. Like Romstad, um, 
collaborated very well with Castalba, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what or who said what at the time, but this is just phenomenal that um, the two authors were able to pass code back and forth and experiment with things, um, and then ultimately decided uh, upon one path, uh, one engine, uh, which they intended to support. So uh, kudos to both developers for having the maturity to do all that. Um, how many developers are there? There's probably a hundred. I'm not sure. There's a authors list with the Stockfish source code um, published on GitHub. Um, I think at one point I even made the list. I'm not sure if I'm still on it because my contributor contributions were rather minor. Um, it's always fun to talk about these uh, ideas with the developers who are most active on the project. Whereas I mostly preferred to work on my own fork of it where it's just a test bed for all kinds of other fun ideas too. Um, but yeah, kudos to these two developers for having the maturity to both cooperate um, and ultimately one of them chooses to sunset their project. Um, you know, just the, happened to be the right thing to do at the time and I don't see anything about strife or anything in here so I'm assuming that that was amicably done and um, at the time working on the iOS chess app was the more interesting thing for him to do at that time and whatever. So I just find it really cool that they were able to collaborate and make something so great occur and they've brought on a team of other developers and it's just been um, an amazing thing for the chess community at large. Uh, without open source projects there's not really a place to try new ideas other than commercial software and corporations um, are hesitant to take risks on some things so it's good that amateurs can try out ideas on an open source version uh, their development tools for stockfish are incredible state-of-the-art um, and really simplify the development and testing of the software so Kudos to them for building not only a wonderful chess engine, but also excellent development tools. Um, I have heard of Ludum Dare. I'm aware that it's like you. there's a weekend and you produce a project within the weekend. There's a theme that goes along with it. And you can be in a, sing, a solo or a team division. So yeah, I've certainly heard of Ludum Dare. I've not yet participated in it. Hopefully this winter I can find time to do the other interesting thing which be the advent of code oh wow Ludum Dar is starting in 24 hours um yeah if I had the free time I'd be working on advent of code unless somebody knows what the topic for Ludum Dare is and it's something that deeply interests me probably advent of code interests me much more at this time because I just don't have the time effort and energy to um, pick up a project, develop it in a weekend like that, and spend all my time on that. Uh, Advent to Code looks way more fun or appealing to me, or much more lighthearted at least. That's my take. Um, so in 2014, Castalba announced that he had decided to step down as the maintainer, and asked the community create a fork of the current version and continue its development. An official repository managed by a volunteer group of core Stockfish developers was created soon after and currently manages the development of the project. And since 2014, yeah, Fish Test is the, these awesome development tools they work with. You can find all this information on Wikipedia. And this links to all these sources that provide a great deal of information. Uh, it's a regular participant in the Top Chess Engine competition. It's played some awesome games against uh, engines and against uh, grandmasters alike. Uh, yeah, I think they had a handicap or odds match in 2016, was that? I forget. Oh, 2014. So that was quite exciting. There's this thing that allegedly happened. I'm not going to go into detail on that. And um, yeah, it's released uh, using C++ source code, so it supports Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and Android. So very cool. Um, and yeah, it's awesome that 
Stockfish came into being and continues to be maintained and uh, released, particularly the open source aspect of it, as well as the tools that go with that. Um, advent of code. I'll take another brief digression, so forgive me here. Uh, people who want to see me just code all day, we can, we're going to get to the coding in a bit. Um, advent of code. Oh, come on. Advent of Code is an annual advent calendar, which would be a 25-day calendar, I think, of small programming puzzles. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a 25-day calendar, if I remember right. An advent calendar would be a four-week thing, which so that would be 28 or whatever days. But yeah, it's an annual advent calendar of small programming puzzles for a variety of skill sets and skill levels that can be solved in any programming language you like. I look forward to doing this. I've got several years of that to catch up on. Other cool digression, Project Euler. This went down for a while, it's back up. Um, you can actually see my badge um, right on my page here, if I remember right, although I don't see it. I think it's here somewhere, but yeah, Project Euler is a more demanding thing. I've done, I forget how many of these. Um, I forget how I can also look up how many I've done. So. It's there, it's on my badge somewhere. Um, in fact, I think it's on my Lee Chess profile. So if I were to go hop over here, I could see, yeah, I've solved 106 of these. 106, 108, I can't read that digit right now. Uh, I'm a bit tired at the moment, but yeah. Um, you do advent of code in any language. It's a set of problems. Um, each problem is a word problem. Uh, that has some numbers in it. So you solve the problem, type in the answer, and it says good job and puts you on the leaderboard. So that's Advent of Code. Um, so without further ado, um, let's see, can I get programming? Ah, sure, science and technology, sure. Whatever, we'll do it. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. Um, software development. Um, wait, can I not take some tags off of here? Weird. So apparently I'm stuck with English, IRL, and creative because that's what I started the stream with or something. I don't get it. But software development is what we're doing at the moment. And or review. So it'll be exciting. All right, so yeah, this is the official release version of Stockfish 10 on the 10th anniversary of the Stockfish project. So it's amazing this has came to come to be. Thanks also to the developers for Multivariant Stockfish, my pet project that I've been ever so lucky to have uh, other developers contribute to and tell me when I'm doing things wrong <laughs> and uh, contribute code and testing power and the test site on which um, we verify that I'm not breaking things. So yeah, thanks to everybody for helping keep that organized. Um, and I'm glad to just, for my part, try to code review and uh, put some ideas out there as well. Um, so yeah, we'll just leave the chessboard going in the upper right. It'll be fun. Um, so one feature was lost at some point, and now I'm going to try to figure out how to reintroduce it. <laughs> this is going to be wonderful. Uh, it's going to be glorious. It's probably going to confuse the hell out of me. Um, it's a feature we had for Leechus called Longest PV. Um, so sometime throughout the last six months, 12 months, I don't remember. Um, we had introduced, oh, hang on, here we go. Yeah, we'd introduced a flag, use longest PV, um, which provided more verbose explanations of the principal variation of a search. Um, so, this uh, flag got removed because I could not remember how to, uh, what's it? 
I could not figure out how to merge the upstream enhancements that the Stockfish, the official Stockfish project had made uh, in terms of they introduced a new way to vote on uh, the principal variation that completely broke our original implementation and I struggled mightily trying to understand it and ultimately had to scrap the idea at least until I have time to review it and try to bring it back. Well, we're going to try to bring it back. I'm probably going to... Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Let's be optimistic, shall we? All right, so... Uh, use Longest PV had a way of keeping track of not just the best PV, but also of the best principal variation or variations. Which one of those has the most moves in it? Because that's the one the person uh, viewing the engine output wants to see. So if you have multiple moves that are equally good, or equally well explored, and um, then you can swap out um, the best thread and the longest PV thread um, based on some tie-breaking stuff, which is super exciting. Um, and which probably I can't just literally merge this back in as it stands. Uh, so I've got to figure out at what point was this removed? Can I do some sort of revert check-in, or sorry, revert commit, and then see what I break or where the merge mismerges? Um, so what lines of code were introduced upstream that broke what I was doing? Um, <laughs> range of oh wait, I could do a git blame on this file, couldn't I? Um, so how does git work? Git blame search dot cpp. Okay, so this shows you like who touched which line of code. Um, uh, so I touched some lines somewhere, right? Yeah, here's stuff I'm responsible for having changed. So one of these lines has to do with um, PV. It's probably something if I search my code base for, uh, what's a keyword? Best thread? Prep best thread? Um, nope. All right. OK, let's just search for best thread, because that's in here somewhere. All right, so I didn't touch any of the lines that have the best thread stuff in it, but um, something I merged at some point must have um, broken something here. And it was something I touched throughout the last year, and do I see it here anywhere? I'm curious what this commit is. This one that assigns best thread equal to TH, which has the most recent uh, date on it. Uh, get log that commit number. Um, unfortunately, that seems not to be what I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure how to get bisect to grep for something. Does anybody know or is familiar with how do you get bisect grep on a deleted line of code? Uh, if not, I'm going to have to figure this out. Um, <laughs> so, oh wait, get diff here. This will show what's different um, with respect to search.cpp, with respect to that particular commit. Um, grep use longest. Okay. So, as of that revision, um, yeah, use longest PV was still in the code base. <sighs> da, 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 da. So how do I get diff bisect to find a keyword that is no longer in the file? Git diff bisect. So you can do tests with git bisect, but I don't know. I've never used bisect before. Um... Wait, get terms, term good, term bad. Is this what I'm looking for? 
term. Uh, good. Um, get bisect terms. Okay. See alternate terms below for more information. Alternate terms. Sometimes you're looking for the commit that introduced a breakage, but not for a commit that caused a change other than some old new state. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To get a reminder of the currently used terms, do the following. I want to do a like something that greps with a get bisect or whatever. Um, stack. Let's try to. S Sorry if I'm not entirely cogent. Um, get uh, bisect grep, which I know is a solution rather than a problem. There we go. Here we go. How do I find the deleted code? Ah, use the search algorithm or argument to get log. Um, wait, is that for commit message? No. Okay, get log dash s. I'll give that a shot. All right. Get log dash s. Use longest pb. Perfect. Oh, that's less exciting. Um, wait, what? How is that in my history? Um, hmm. Okay. But that's the git log. That's not the contents of the source code. Yeah, that's not what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, mm hmm. Find deleted code. Um, get log s string. Oh, g regex. Okay. See? Um, stack overflow is wonderful for finding. Uh, oh. Uh, okay. Uh, dot dot dot. So remove the D skill compile flag. Um. Oh, all of these revisions have this code. Wait. I'm confused. So. Oh wait, so this revision contained the thing. What's the revision immediately preceding or following that revision? Um doesn't quite matter if I can find that in um using a command line, because we've got GitHub. GitHub can solve all our problems. Not really, but we can try. So I want branch no, I want the that revision. Um, how the heck do I find the revision in the revision history? Because <sighs> I want to find the thing that got checked in after that, and I'm not sure that looking at that particular revision could tell me what it checked in after that. But I could look at this uh, history, compare the date. We see April 22nd. There's got to be a more efficient way of doing this. Um, but I want to find what got checked in after April 22nd that that I did that broke this, that removed this feature. Ideally, I would have left some sort of hint, comment, whatever, that uh, this feature has been removed. Um, at the time, I was mostly focused on just merging other developers' changes and couldn't figure it out. I had other things I was focusing on as well. So yeah, this commit contained um, that string. 
or not this commit, but this version of the file that contains the commit. That's the version. Um, so if we wanted to get diff with that version, you would see that this diff does in fact contain um, use longest PV. Uh, so thank you Stack Overflow for helping me read documentation. Um, so the, that was this version. I merged all these upstream changes. I did two merges on the 23rd. Um, so this merge must have been the one that removed the parameter in question. And it'd be nice if my mouse would not fight me on every one of these things. I need a new mouse. Uh, but trust me, that's the one that somehow, if we were just able to open this, okay, right click works. Um, so we should see that I removed, um, where was it? Along with all these other things that were going on at the time. Uh, apparently that wasn't it. All right. Was it this one? I'm sorry, no, use longest PV is not in here. But I should see that I removed it, no? Somehow this diff should indicate my removal of use longest PV. Right? Okay, it's still in there. Um, maybe it was this one? I feel like if I knew more git, I'd be more effective with this, for sure. But I'm also always struggling to catch up with stuff. Yes, it's still there. So I don't know. Let's go up here. Sure. How about here? View file. It's still there. Um. Wow. The back button's not working. That's great. Um, how about July? Did we have this in July? Let's open a new browser tab and attempt to click on it. And attempt to click view file. And perhaps there's something about this particular browser that's no longer supported. I don't know. I know they say they support Firefox. This is Waterfox I'm using. It's not that different. It's more performant and secure, and probably Microsoft hates it, if I had to guess, but I don't know. Um, here, let's take a look at this version of the file. Okay, screw this. You know, git checkout master grep use longest pv in search.cpp git check out head minus one um, and grep use longest pv search.cpp okay it's still there still there still there just keep doing this until we find my commit which removed use longest pv um, this is, but also, uh, wait, um, wait, what? It's this grep statement. If def is right there. I, I thought I removed this feature, did I not? Okay, apparently it's... Ay, ay, ay. Where's the assignment to longest PV thread? Where does this get assigned? Nowhere. Okay. Well, that's great. I'd, so when I deleted this... Um, or change some of the assignment of longest PV thread. 
Um, yeah, then I'm missing. That's great. Um, hey, welcome. I am so confused how I merged the code in this state and left half of the things here. We've got this variable doesn't get assigned anywhere. So I can understand how it compiles. Um, but if I go change my compile flags, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. so tu du's longest pv uh, test.sh this won't compile. This definitely will not compile because we're trying to reference a variable that's um, undefined. Yeah, it's a lot of code. Um, I'm probably not helping my situation that I'm streaming from Windows, coding on Linux, um, so it's kind of exciting. Um, right. All right, so here we go. We're going to check out head minus one and, uh, and recompile. And we're going to keep doing this until, um, uh, until we get a version that does compile. Git bisect is probably more efficient. Um, but I don't think I'm going to have to go back more than two dozen commits to get something that does, in fact, compile. Uh, so we'll figure this out. Ah, I am making a chess engine. A uh, chess engine that's used for analysis on um, the open source chess server, leechess.org. Um, they do, in fact, use my engine as it currently stands, however, we lost a feature sometime in the last year. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Uh, I probably could have just looked at when did I change the make file. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. No, that wouldn't have done it. Um, oops. So, the make file did change. Um, as I introduced placement chess more recently, but that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, so where was it? I broke the build that used that parameter. Could probably look at makefile itself. In fact, why am I doing with this compilation stuff? Um, where's my grep statement? Um, yeah. Grep this in make file. Um, make clean. Get check out head minus one and grep du's longest pv in make file. Uh, we're just going to keep repeating this grep until we go find um, where's the version that this got removed. Um, actually, do I still have that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's too bad that this only searches source, I'm sorry, searches all the files as opposed to I had a file that had some word in it. Okay. <sighs> so, this was the last working version, August 9th. Now, I don't know how to get what did I check in after August 9th. There's no way to say git head plus one, because we just, I would be surprised if git offered that feature, because there could be multiple futures on a head, while, whereas there's only one past or history. Um, however, what we can do, um, Where is my make file? Source slash make file. This is what I was searching for. Make file. M-A-K-E. 
Um, here it is. Found it. Um, history. So August 9th was the last working version. Um, wait. Okay. So somehow, oh, I know what I could have done. There's a couple things I could have done more intelligently here. Um, but yeah, I think this was the commit that removed this feature. There we go. Uh, so in having merged something upstream, um, we finally identified what did the break. Um, uh, I broke this feature. Alright. Um, I'm looking into uh, now to try to figure out how to reintroduce this feature. Alright. Okay. So. Um, yeah, if I were to do, like, just straight out git revert, that would probably be disgusting. Um, although, why not, <laughs> right? Git check out master, git check out experimental, git revert this thing. Okay, could not revert. Status shows here's all the stuff that was involved with this. Uh, make files, uh, make file introduced um, placement variant. Um, mm -mm. Where is it? Oh, at the end of the command line, we have use longest PV. Um, yeah, we can add that at the end. Use longest PV. Okay, cool. Now, why is one of these... What am I missing? You have anti-chess, atomic, bug house, crazy house, displaced grid, extinction chess, grid, horde, king of the hill, loop, loser's chess, placement, racing kings, slipped grid... Oh, I removed D skill. Because it was an unuseful, it's not a useful parameter to have. Uh, get add make file, then search. That's okay. Um, get diff uh, UCI option. Um, so what this comes down to is I don't want to remove all this stuff. Wait, what? Um, oh, okay, I don't know how that got intertwined with all this stuff, but sure, get diff, cached will show, here's what would be done by a revert, uh, we introduce the, okay, we introduce the, uh, use longest PV command line or make file parameter uh, CXX flag all right um, is this is my AI to participate um, oh hey yeah welcome is this my AI to participate in the twitch competition I have no idea what that is unfortunately uh, but also probably not because this is GPL licensed and I'm one of about a hundred authors on this so Probably I don't get to submit this for that sort of thing, if I had to guess. This is just me having fun. Because um, uh, I like chess, and I like programming, and it's just good to keep my mind fresh. Um, and I'm probably doing a terrible job explaining everything that I'm touching here. Um, so... Yeah, at one point I had some parameters to configure quite a few things here. Um, and I don't need any of those because that only reduced the binary size, but like, 
half of a percent or something. Uh, so get status, get add, search, cpp, get diff, cache, will show what else, what? Huh? That doesn't make sense. Oh, there's multiple merge conflicts. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, get revert continue. Right. Okay. Uh, wait, what? Um, so, yeah, I'm still missing the functionality I was hoping to have here. There should have been a definition of longest PV thread. Um, in fact, that's what I should have been passing to. Uh, okay. Um, get log, get reset. Hard head minus one clear um, get log rep for longest PV thread, which unfortunately is not going to have the assignment in there. Um, so I can search for assignment. Um, hopefully, I can find it this way. Occur. Um, not what I expected. Did I really remove this a year ago? December 19th. Um, it could be. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This was the change that conflicted with my thing. Um, my merge of this uh, broke this feature. Now to figure out how to fix it. There we go. That's better. Yeah, so this, this is the thing I was trying to merge. Clarify search criteria prefer higher eval once our PV is long enough. So they made some pretty awesome changes to um, the way that searches work. And this confused the hell out of me with regard to the stuff I previously enhanced, merged, changed, whatever to try to spit out longer variations. Um, now they have a better way of identifying the principal variation, which I successfully merged. However, yeah, it's not so great. All right, so it's basically a computer chess tournament. Really? Huh. OK. Um, that's kind of cool. I'll look into more about that. I do appreciate um, what's being done on the Computer Chess channel, I think, where chess.com is relaying some engine competitions and blitz, which is quite exciting. Um, it's kind of intriguing that Twitch is also doing their own thing, but a chess program is kind of non-trivial, and I don't have the time to make a submission for that sort of thing. And I'm unfortunately unable to submit this engine because, um, yeah, I'm not its principal author, not nearly. It would be violating the spirit, if not the rules, of your competition. But it's cool that they're doing that. Um, it's just unfortunate that they picked chess as the game to do that for because there's a whole lot of coding you do. And at the end of the day, it's, a lot of engines have quite a few similarities. It takes a lot of effort to get any sort of novel thing going. Um, if they were to pick a chess-like game, perhaps they would have more competitors. I don't know. Chess does have its appeal, but I, I'm confused. Anyway, um, so yeah, this was the thing I merged. And my merge of that um, broke stuff. So it was December 19th or thereabouts, where I broke this. So, 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 so. Um, that was last year. Wow. 
Uh, December 19th, 2017. Or thereafter. Um, is this where I did it? Is this where I broke the thing? Um, no, I apparently didn't change use longest PV because I'm not finding that in the diff. So how the heck did I break this? This was not developed any sooner than the 19th. Oh, 2016. Has this been broken for two years? Um. Oh my goodness. No wonder I'd suppress this memory. <laughs> it's been too long. All right, let's get this figured out. Uh, 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 how could that possibly be? Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> so which of these? Oh, um. Oh, well, that's not it. What did I do here? <laughs> how how did this go down? Um Oh my goodness. Uh okay, so grip. Uh, what was the assignment of this thing? Somewhere there's an assignment. Yeah, longest PV thread equals TH. Um, so we'll search that. Um, inside of search.cpp. Um, damn it. Uh, why does... Oh, I'm sorry. Get get diff no okay right I want to pipe this to grep for longest PV thread equals th um, so I want that to eventually return a thing um, so get check out head minus one and do this again and we're going to keep doing this till we find where's the thing that broke this eventually we're going to get some sort of message here um, here we are um, so get log this indicates here's my merge August 9th of this year. That makes more sense. Uh, my merge edit. Uh, my commit. Whatever the hell I was doing, this is what broke the feature. So, git check out experimental. Git revert this thing. What? It's a merge, but no dash M option was given. Okay, I don't know what to make of that. Um, let's see. Science and Technology, leechus.org, top game. Yeah, the leechus.org top game is pretty exciting. Not going to lie about that. Um, how do I get so good at programming? Um, access to good teachers. Um, willpower. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is like super abstract stuff, especially because I'm trying to troubleshoot something and I don't understand half the tools I'm working with. Um, I wish I could kind of explain that, but, uh, you're making the best of whatever this is. Uh, so, 
Um, man, get. Yeah, if you have questions, feel free to ask too, because like I'm not sure how better to explain what this is. Oh, usually you cannot revert a merge because you don't know which side of the merge could be considered the main line. This option specifies the parent member starting from one of the main line allows revert to reverse the change relative to the specified parent. <sighs> okay. Um. This is beautiful. <laughs> I am so screwed trying to fix this. Um, uh, that doesn't tell me. <laughs> like, I'd appreciate if that like would prompt me and give me some more information. That'd be great. I mean, I could try a one. I could try a two. One of those two values should work. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Sure, let's get revert merge whatever uh, M1. How bad could it be? Damn. All right. Uh, it's status. So uh, so this is going to show here's the thing. I want use longest PV at the end of my line here so I can like yank word I think oops well that didn't quite do it but so that was the uh, parameter I want back at the end of the line I just look forward to the comments from like technical people who are gonna watch this afterward if there are any and have a good laugh at my expense um, for my I don't know this is like not the language nor the technology I would deal with on a daily basis. So the fact that I'm able to do this at all is kind of fun. Okay, so that's the file I'm struggling with. Um, are there other files I can consider first, or should I dive right head in? Uh, should I dive in head first? Um, evaluate .cpp. Actually, uh, get reset head evaluate and PSQT. Those are kind of incidental because we are merging a whole bunch of crap at the same time. Because um, I'm not like rebasing my changes every time I merge from upstream, but instead accepting all the upstream changes. I could create a new branch every time I merge from upstream and I would, would not have any idea what I'm doing, but it could work. But I have a repo that's periodically pulling changes from upstream, merging them into my master branch, which confuses everybody other than people familiar with my project. So that's not intentional, but um, it's uh, about as good as it's going to get. Um, so yeah, this is the sort of stuff I was struggling with merging. Um, so you know what? Why don't I just take this at face value? Uh, quit. Get add. Search .cpp. Get status. Wait. Get revert continue? Not get commit. Get revert continue. Okay. Um, yeah. Get push. Uh, origin experimental. I get that that doesn't compile, but you know, um, <laughs> that's exciting. People will be able to look at this. Uh, edit this. First attempt is at that. There we go. So we can see here's the thing I just changed. So I added, use longest PV back here, and added all these merge, mismerge characters in, and just say, I have no clue what the freak is going on, but this is the stuff that's got to be uh, reconciled somehow. So, um, it's probably not the right way to try to fix the problem, 
Yeah, so this is like the brute force approach. Um, uh, <laughs> hey, look, I created a file with this kind of fun name. Um, Rev is the, yeah, okay, you get status, you get all kinds of other local files. Um, so here's my tests uh, shell script, which does the compilation. Um, only because I'm not running in some sort of continuously compiling environment. So watch in amazement as this blows up. It compiles most of the files, so at least I got most of it working. But yeah, the last 10% uh, is going to be hell, but we'll figure it out. It's okay. We've got a starting point. So just need to figure out which of these changes get reconciled which way. Probably somebody, I don't know, not me is going to figure this out before I do. But, um, you know, what if I can figure it out? Wouldn't that be exciting? <sighs> oh, I know what I should do. Git diff uh, master. So this shows, hey, look at, you've introduced this new line here, use longest PV. You've lost the functionality um, that you previously merged from upstream. Probably want to reintroduce that functionality, but not in a way that loses um, these uh, initializations and the assignments that occur within this loop. Um, so, it's just bad enough that like anybody can do better than this. Um, so I've identified what code was lost. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to reintroduce something like this into um, a development branch would be cool. Uh, so how? <laughs> So the stuff in red here is how the latest official Stockfish handles search. The stuff in green is how my fork used to handle search based on how official Stockfish used to handle a search uh, for a multi-PV search. No, for any kind of search. If multi-PV is one, there's some cases, and elsewhere there's like if multi-PV is not one, you still need to print out the principal variation. Uh, so, um, I'm not sure what to do here, because I want the latest search features, but I also want this code that tries to figure out um, what which of the multiple principal variations um, is the uh, variation that we want to print out to the user. Um, so git check out master. You can verify that my test script does in fact compile Stockfish. I have some other things in my test script which actually run Stockfish's benchmarks and verifies that I've got the right um, number of nodes being searched during that testing as compared to the commit logs which have the official numbers in them. Um, so we're going to get to check out the experimental dash two. And we're going to diff this with experimental. So this is basically the same diff we were just looking at um, however, you can hear things in red are things worth considering re reintroducing. Edit, reintroducing. Um, uh, so, what do I do to give access or visibility to that those lines? I mean, I can just copy and paste this through the terminal. That does work. And for now, that might be my best um, might be my best option to reintroduce this stuff. 
So as long as I, there we go. Stuff compiles, it's okay. Uh, so what else might need to be reintroduced? Um, also, reintroducing this code might be seriously non-trivial. Um, <laughs> so we have a thing we used to call a depth diff and a score diff. Those are probably still valid concepts with this latest code, if I had to guess. Um, we probably still have a principal variation, although, um, if I remember right, there are changes upstream might have removed a variable that's no longer necessary somewhere here. Um, so yeah, we have ways of identifying um, the principal variation and then printing out the principal variation. Um, this other stuff can stay. This is what happens when I'm not merging individual commits from upstream. Um, and especially ones which conflict, that would be a better policy. Um, so I think this is completely independent and can be ignored. Um, what else? So we have a concept of best vote. Is there still a concept of best depth? I wonder. So we've got like votes per move, per like principal variation, root move. Um, for each one of those moves, there's a number of votes as to which uh, variation should be the PV. This might completely change how PVs work. Um, so let's see what... Uh, so we previously had like depth diff and score diff and um, min score and such were pretty important. Um, actually, that's still important, isn't it? Um, I'm curious though. For thread, min score is the minimum of the two scores. Votes. Um, yeah, I, I'm so confused. Select the thread with the best score, uh, always if it is a mate. And here that got replaced with voting according to both score and depth. So I need a way to say um, if I have moves that are equally highly ranked with respect to voting, however one of them has more moves than the other, then we can make that the principal variation. Um, so how do I do that? Um, mm -hmm. I'm so confused. Now this wasn't even within the scope of my use longs PV. This was always part of the main search technique. It's only stuff between the use longest PVs that um, could be confused. So longest plies is equal to the maximum number of plies between either the first move or of longest plies itself? How does that make sense? And this all used to be within the loop for each thread. Well, okay, now here we have for each thread, count up the votes. Um, so can keep track of the greatest number of plies, but to what end? 
how would the greatest number of plies be useful? Um, it's the maximum of yeah the length of a variation versus the greatest known number of plies. Um, but that seems kind of odd. There's not like a continue statement anywhere in here as best as I can tell. So the lack of a continue would suggest that irrespective of the move's quality, um, longest plies is just going to be the longest variation. Uh, so how is that a good thing? I don't get it. We had some explanation somewhere. I think Isaac um, uh, Isaac Levy, I believe, uh, contributed this wonderful patch for extending the principal variation by way of, well, selecting the variation that has the most moves among equal variations. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know what value longest plies is for, or how that ends up being useful, but I'll reintroduce it anyway. Um, and we'll try to figure out... Uh, let's see, where was the thing? So for each move here, we can initialize votes and stuff, whatever. So, you know, we can initialize longest plies, because why not? Um, I'm still kind of missing the point on why we have that, but... Um, is there any performance detriment to sticking it there instead of the loop below it? Because um, the loop below it concerns itself with root moves uh, dot pv this loop oh this loop also uh, concerns itself with rip moves pv so six one way half dozen the other um so i think that's fine as for why there's two loops i'm missing something oh min score we have to initialize min score in order to be able to do um rip moves score minus min score got it so that's the purpose of the initialization here. Okay. Um, so what else am I missing? Wait, how? I just introduced this use longest PV stuff. My diff should indicate that. Um, it should so show that I still have use longest plies equals this assignment here. I'm not seeing it. Oh, it's moved up here. Okay, I don't know how the diff is working this way, but it is. That's okay. So I accept that this is merged, and so now if you use longest PV, you have some stuff here about selecting the best thread. Um, but my th code has like selecting the best thread this way. Um, best has a very interesting definition in this circumstance. Oh my goodness, my head hurts. Um, so longest PV thread is equal to best thread if the best thread has fewer moves than longest plies do some extra stuff. Okay, we need something like that. Um, this doesn't add much processing power to like do this extra comparison. Um, but where was that with respect to? Well, I don't know. Um, that was not what I wanted. So Control C. There we go. Um. Oops, I wanted to search for this here. So somewhere we are selecting the best thread. 
And after having selected the best one, um, let's see. If the number of votes is greater than the best vote, then the best vote is equal to this, and the best thread is equal to th. Um, and I assume what I'm looking for is there's not actually too much code here, is there? I expect there would be a lot more. Um, okay. So let's just stick this in here. Um, so what am I going to do about this? Best thread. A thread could be searching one or more moves, right? Um, so we've done our best thread assignment, and we need to do something more here. And as for what the more thing is, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, if the best threads uh, principal variation is shorter than the minimum of min plies and longest plies. Now where did min plies get set? Because I don't see that here anywhere. Um, oh, min plies is equal to 6. Okay. Where is that even used? I'm sorry, that's used in this context. Um, all right. Uh, so, grep for min plies, because there must be an assignment here somewhere. I see no assignment. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that min plies is longest plies with a minimum value of 6. Okay, as opposed to just having a magic number six in here somewhere. Um, interesting. I kind of favor the magic number, honestly. Because at least we know that that number uh, is magic. I'm sorry, no, we have it. It's a const. That is a const, so it doesn't matter. Although. Looking at it, I would not have guessed it to be const, um, but whatever. Uh, that can be inlined. That's no problem. So longest plies. So what I'm confused about, yeah, why don't I just initialize this to 6 instead of having a special variable for it? Um, I don't get it. That way I don't need this standard min. I can just assume a default value of 6. That saves everything. Other than the fact that the gets initialized to 6, which is kind of weird, but that's okay. Um, so if the best thread's length is less long than longest plies, then we got to do something. Um, okay, so what do we got to do? Is it another loop? Uh, uh, so, When we first introduced the feature, um, uh, status <sighs> remove ice t whatever uh, get commit. So we're gonna call this uh, use longest. PV reimplementation uh, redevelopment.
content, work in progress. Uh, so we can see here's what we introduced so far is the initializers for the variables um, and some notion that we're going to do something there. Um, didn't I also change make file? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so, git commit amend. Uh, so we got there's make clean. This is the real test is now that I've declared the variable, uh, does the code compile, irrespective of whether it does whether what it actually really needs to do. Um, so we're making progress. It's slow and painful and confusing, and I'm not explaining it particularly well, but we are making progress. Lines are getting reintroduced um, to try to uh, be able to print out more verbose information um, based on what moves uh, a engine or a human might play. I'm still confused though. Like, this initial implementation must have had something about um, move or variations being equal in length. Or, I'm sorry, variations being equal in score or some other consideration that I'm just f overlooking here. Oh, wait. This has to do with the principal variation, not with the best move. This is just the best thread. Um, so let's see, we got, um, this is not gonna influence the selection of best move, nor is it gonna rearrange any of the threads or anything contained within a thread. It's just gonna print out the longest PV thread. Um, okay, so, Now, why this contains longest PV thread is equal to TH? I mean, it's got to get initialized to something. If longest PV is too short, do some stuff. Otherwise, do some other stuff. Um, but I don't think that was the principal case. I think our principal case was that we needed... Uh, we wanted to select a thread based on... I don't remember what. Um, have I heard? Yes. Yes, I very much heard of the crazy ARA. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I've actually been asking about, like, hey, can we get a crazy house engine contest going? Um, I think that'd be great. Uh, who arranged that last year? I'm blanking on the name. I feel horrible for this. Oh my goodness. Give me a second. Give me a second. I will remember this. I must remember this. I feel absolutely terrible about not remembering it. Um, oh my gosh. Um, I know how to look this up, but God, this is embarrassing. Ah, crazy house. Um... Um, why am I drawing a blank and why am I so bad at this? <laughs> um, da, 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 da. This is the engine. Uh, Ferdinand Mosca. Yes. Ferdinand Mosca was our, um, the very, very gracious host of this event two years in a row putting forth tons and tons of effort to organize and orchestrate this. I worked together with him to, uh, and with the Lee Chess team to ensure that last year's championship did get broadcast at like 3 a.m. my time, and I commentated on it. 
it was wonderful. It was very fascinating. And Immortal is an excellent, wonderful chess engine that, like, or Crazy House engine that um, knocked other Crazy House engines out. Um, so, yeah, Immortal uh, won this uh, candidates tournament, which with a performance rating of 2,931. Uh, that's just amazing. Um, it's just that engines are that strong at this game. Um, yeah, it, I wish that we can have another tournament this year. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I did upload that to YouTube. Um, you'd have to look at the video that got uploaded uh, what day this happened. Sometime in December, like as the calendar year was turning. Yeah, 29th of December. So you need to look f around that time of year. And But, um, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is awesome. So I wish uh, Ferdinand Mosca would be very gracious, uh, but I completely understand if he, that's not something he... He was very kind to do it like two years in a row. Um, I'd be... Every year he does this, I'm amazed. Because he coordinated all these challengers to play matches against each other. They all submitted engines to him uh, to compete. I'm just blown away that he does this. Um, because it's a lot of work to set up the matches and monitor the matches and make sure they all finish. It's, it's incredible. And I completely understand why, um, although we were able to broadcast the games on Lee Chess, Lee Chess is not throwing money at computers and running the contests themselves um, in the same way that chess.com can't afford to. Um, both in terms of uh, the power to run the contest, devoting so much computational power to it, as well as just monitoring it and making sure it's always up. Um, yeah, so I'll, sorry I don't have the video at the ready right now. Um, so, yeah, we see this compiles here. Uh, uh, so if I want to just get the standard 42 positions, here you go. That all compiles and runs and prints out principal variations uh, using the new parameter. Uh, master... Uh, make file will show here's the new parameter we just reintroduced. Get log will show me that I've not yet pushed this, so push origin experimental dash two. Um, so I'll probably use that as a basis for what I'm going to do next there. Um, unfortunate. Oh, good. I was going to say I'm going to have a difficult time linking you to that. Um, even though a search engine could probably find it, I unfortunately like it's not a vanity link. I forget what they call it, but it's good that you found the channel and or the video. Sorry about my disorganization there. Um, um, so yeah, something is different between this and the other. Um, and I just don't know what to merge about this stuff here. I probably just switch back and forth between the two branches until I've come up with this is the set of changes which we intend to keep and this is the set which we don't intend to keep. Um, and my goodness, my head is going to explode looking at some of this stuff. But, um, so, okay, I think the, I guess the point is that if our current longest if our current longest is short, allow a weakening of score and depth to an absolute max of score, max score diff divided by max depth diff, depth diff compared to the best thread. 
oh my goodness. Um, max score diff or max depth diff compared to the best thread. Uh, <laughs> so... Or since longest PVA thread is already long, only select among threads with long PVs with strong eval or depth. Um, so this is the shit that I want to figure out. And I'm going to struggle figuring it out. And whatever. YOLO. Alright, so... If my mouse would work here. Sorry. Um, uh, permit... Sorry about that. It occurs to me that permit probably doesn't actually unban you or whatever. Um, all right, so my mouse works for once there. Um, so we're going to take a look at this. Not that I'm watching the video. Not that current viewers would be watching the video right now either. But people who would be watching the VOD for this uh, could at least catch up with it that way. Okay, so I forget if eval tempo is still a thing. Um, let's try it. Does this compile? No. <laughs> Minplies was not declared in the scope. All right. Minplies. Now there's like min votes now, I think. Um, sorry. Uh, I'll try that again. I don't know how this damn thing works. Um, uh, yeah, just... I don't know if you... <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll continue like spamming this command or something because apparently um, yeah I don't know there's something about it nope <laughs> okay cool I'm surprised that like this bot doesn't have a way to specify permit this for like a minute so yeah if a user with the name of 600 shows up in the next minute they can post a link but they're probably not going to show up. All right, thanks for sharing that. Um, so I lost my spot here. Min plies versus longest plies. Oh, right. So there we go. Add search. Let's try that again. Um, search dot cpp. All right. Whoops. Yeah, no, I did that right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Get and search test test whatever. Does this compile? Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, my bot is a bit. Um, I might need to upgrade Phantom Bot. I saw they have a new release lately, and I forget whether or not I've obtained it because I'm not completely awake at the moment. But we'll, we'll press onward. Uh, get commit amend. Get push f origin experimental dash two. Whatever. So it's probably good enough. Clear. So test. Successfully compiles. Um, well, uh, just standard chess. Hey, it runs, I guess. Um, how does this work? I'm not sure. Like, if I go into make file and say we say D or 
x d use longest pv uh, and then touch search that cpp remove search dot all right so we're going to try compiling this again unrecognized okay um all right we'll just move the x over one no big deal uh, is uh yeah and no, i've already deployed it uh, we'll go into that in a second oh good this compiles either way um, good get checked out well i don't even know if this is experimental or not um so let's get the this issue number 546 get uh commit amend fix 546 Push F Origin Experimental 2. That'll tie that fix to this issue. So somebody who were to come to this issue page would see, hey, we got a fix. And I don't have any idea if this works. Um, uh, wait. Um, yeah, I'll pester the fo uh, the Lee Chess devs to um, wait. Can I not ping the Lee Chess account? Like, I can notify somebody within this thread. But there's actually an official Lee Chess account um, on GitHub, but um, I guess whatever. So we'll figure this out at some point. I'll have other people review it and tell me how I did it wrong, but um, it's good to have it, I guess. Uh, in fact, why don't I leave that tab open? Okay, that's merged. Um, I'm sorry, that's reintroduced the code. So it's only 2300 Crazy House. Oh, um, well, hang on. Uh, so let's be a little clearer here. Leechess.org, right? And online friends. I've got Godel Escher Bot. Um, now you're right that it's on here, it's only rated 2313. You're absolutely right. Oh, and it just dawns on me, I can't show you the configuration for it much as I want to because um, there are tokens, there are secrets inside the configuration, so I can't show it. But you'll have to trust me that, like, this bot moves fast. It's not exactly trying as hard to win as the other stockfishes. Um, it's just trying to have a good time. Uh, also, the fact that it's like not spending all the CPU time and all the memory and all that, but like it's just playing. You know, if people beat it, um, that kind of shows that maybe there's. I think the fact that it's not on full strength gives humans a chance to find bugs in the software. So, um, no, you're absolutely right that, like, so, okay, apparently nobody's playing it at the moment. That's okay. Um, but yeah, 2313 is probably right for this particular instance where it's, like, moving instantly because I set move overhead. There's a parameter here that Stockfish takes. Uh, so here's all the parameters. I think I set move overhead. Here it is, this guy. I set this to something like 5,000 or some ridiculous number. Um, maybe it was 1,000, I don't remember. But consequently, it constantly thinks that it's about to run out of time. So it moves very fast. Uh, let me see, can I... Is there a crazy house game or something that's not Racing Kings that it's been playing? Um, Racing Kings tends to be a very quick game in general. Uh, here's what's one minute game with me. That's not too exciting. Um, yeah, can I find game? 
against an opponent that's rated like 1800 or above where uh, it I do make an exception for anti chess I do try to win at all costs there and it does fight like hell and that's why it's rated 2500 cuz I wanted to win at anti chess I wanted to demonstrate that anti chess is solved and not worth playing my opinion but um uh here we go the happy penguin let's see it's unfortunately happy penguin didn't beat it also that's ultra bullet um so that doesn't really show off the fact that it's moving instantaneously or very quickly but if i keep going through the list i should see somewhere here that it moves very quickly in general although most of its opponents love bullet chess so that's not really helping my cause <laughs> Okay, apparently I have to use the search engine to get a game where somebody's not playing one minute. How come there's so many people over 1,500 or over 1,800 that enjoy one minute against the bot? Like, what the heck? I don't get it. Um, so, clock initial time from three minutes. Um, rating. Can we... Oh, come on. My page is frozen. Here we go. Rating from 1,800. I think that's a f average rating. I'm not sure. Or maybe that's opponent rating. I don't remember. Um, oh, you'll play it now. Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. I see it is playing a game. Um, so. Hmm, five minute, five second increment. I guess I could boost um, the pace at which it plays. I could go in there and change the configuration so it plays faster in general. Um, I guess with the five second increment, it's not moving as quickly as it would for others. Uh, but yeah, this is Stockfish 10. Um, and if I could just remember, Leechus dash bot. There's a command here somewhere. Um, let me see if I can find it. Leechus bot has a way that I can identify uh, the version of this that's playing. Let me get go find the commands for Leechus bot. There is a command called eval. There is a command called wait, which I introduced in case people started a challenge and then like, wait a second, I gotta do something quickly and just be back in a minute and Stockfish will, or this bot will wait for you. Ah, name is the command I'm looking for. Exclamation point name. Oh, come on. Wow. Does it ignore me because I'm a spectator? Okay. Oh. Command prefix is exclamation point. Well, I'm bummed that this doesn't work. What the heck? I've tested this in the past. This should plainly print out who the opponent is. Or who should print out the engine's name. Um, I am so confused. Exclamation point name is the command to get the name. Yeah, so we can get an eval. I am. How does my bot not know its own name? Uh, I'll have to fix that. There's always one more thing to be fixed. Um, but yeah, rest assured, this is uh, the latest, greatest Stockfish build, which is built um, today, uh, courtesy of Nicholas uh, Fikas. I've never heard his name pronounced, but hopefully I've done um, some service to his name there. Um, yeah, the Lee Chess team was very excited about the, getting this released, uh, and I with them. So... This means I can actually start to breathe again and focus on other things, but uh, 
No, that's okay. Um, I wanted to demo this anyhow. Um, but yeah, you see it does have a time advantage. Whereas probably most engines would um, not amass such a time edge. I don't know. It's not so obvious here, but if you just play it like straight 5.0 or 3.0 or something, you'll see that it amasses this enormous time edge uh, at the expense of being beatable. And that's why it's got a 2300 rating. Um, it does remarkably well against a uh, human opponent, but it is beatable. So um, it's not easy for sure, but yeah i like the fact that i leave it at a level where it's different than ai level eight ai level eight on um lee chess is kind of brutal um so um but yeah i and i apologize if it looks like i'm goading you into playing it or something um I am confused why it's spending time here. There's something about this position that I don't understand. Or you just might have gotten lucky um, and found a bug. <laughs> if you have, congratulations. Uh, holy crud. Okay, now there it is. Wow. What the heck, Stockfish? <laughs> what the heck? I know, like, um, as the eval spikes, uh, it should spend more time verifying the result. But, yeah, that was amazing. Like, what the heck, Stockfish? What's going on? Um, I'm going to check its error log. Uh, oh, it's still going. Never mind. Okay, cool. So, yeah, no, it works. It's brilliant. Let me get a message out to the folks, uh, to the other developers, saying, you know, could somebody figure out what I've done wrong? Because I'm almost certain I messed something up. Um... Mm -hmm. Let's see. We oh github.com. So what time is it? Okay, I've spent like two hours here. And I almost have something. <laughs> Software is hard to develop. Software is hard. Um uh, Boop, 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 boop. So it's a little easier to see things on this display. Um, oh. Uh, now, what's this about a max score diff? That seems so weird. Uh, da, 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 da. Should there be a max move, uh, vote diff or similar now that PVs are ranked by vote? I don't even know. So, okay, we'll copy that. Uh, 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 just drop that in the developer chat. Um, Hopefully it's good enough. I don't even know. 
but it's food for thought at the very least. Also, it's good to know that I'm at least partially sane, and I did see that maiden too. Um, even if Stockfish kind of delayed on it a bit, um, uh, I see that as well. Well, wait, not sure what's going on there actually. Stockfish is pretty good, but yeah, that twenty-three hundred-ish rating it has is probably justified. No more, no less. I think it's as accurate as that's going to get. Um, if people want, um, I don't know. At some point, Leech us might try to find ratings for the AI levels based on performance against humans, but that seems kind of a difficult task. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. Um, debating food for dinner. Because, well, I'm not quite hungry yet. So I probably shouldn't have food yet. But, um, yeah. yeah. It's good that this is working. I'm so relieved that I was able to get something to compile and run and whatever. Um... So, I'm not sure if at this point I should just like go into full chess mode or something, or... Um, I could look into why Leechus bot itself is not displaying the name when I type the name command. That seems kind of amazing. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um... Let me take a quick look at that over here before I try showing that on stream. It's possible something about the name command. Um, either the command itself is not implemented right, or Leechus might have blocked some of the communication in the chat there. Um, so who knows, right? Uh, so dismiss that. Dismiss that. Open up SSH. Um, so just, uh, there we go. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Grip. Up. Oh, sorry. We're gonna print out the log and grip it for name. Huh. So, but similarly, yeah, I am confused why the name command did not produce an output, but the eval command did produce an output. Um, <laughs> So let me just grep the log file for what was going on at that time. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So the bot did print out its full name. Uh, Stockfish 2018 11 29 64 multivariant leechus bot v1.1. It did print out its full name. However, somehow that communication uh, was not visible to me. So that's weird. Um, I'll have to ask uh, developers how come that chat got blocked. That's really weird. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so at least the bot works. It's communicating its name, but I can't get it to print out its name for everybody to see. So there's something that's up there, and I'm not sure what, but it's not on my end. Um, so what else is there to share here? Oh yeah, so just, yeah, for people tuning in, uh, Stockfish 10 had its official release today. I have since tried to reintroduce into my fork of Stockfish 10 
a feature that I had accidentally lost. Um, okay, so yeah, the stream actually crops properly because, yeah, that works. So there is room for chat there, that's good. Um, but yeah, Stockfish 10 has been released and is deployed on um, affordable cloud storage at OVH. Um, so for like a dollar or a month or something and be able to keep uh, this instance up and running that's got like one CPU, one thread, one core, um, some trivial amount of memory, and about, uh, it's got the Relay Chess website running on it, it's got my chat bot running on it, it's got this Lee Chess bot running on it, I'm trying to remember what other bots I have all running on this single one core machine that's got limited disk space and like no memory. Um, it's wonderful that OVH offers such a thing and hilarious that I can get all these things running concurrently on the same machine. So like if we're too many people to, were to play relay chess games at the same time, that would weaken Stockfish here. Or if people did some activity in this chat room that um, somehow caused the bot, uh, the chat bot to consume a lot of cycles or memory or something, that too would have detrimental effects on the engine. I just, it's kind of a mad science having all the bots running at once, um, all in the same machine, along with the Relay Chess website. Uh, but yeah, Stockfish 10 was released today on its 10th anniversary um, of its initial development. Um, and I'm very hopeful that at some point we'll get one of the uh, Stockfish authors to write, to chronicle the history of Stockfish or something commemorative about this particular occasion. I think that would be fitting. I think it would be awesome if uh, Lee Chess would be uh, publishing such a thing on their blog. And since they're both open source um, and both serve the same sort of audience, I uh, would be hopeful that there could be something, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's too difficult. I hope, though. It'd be great. I'd love to hear more from the authors or maintainers. Um, um, but yeah. I was able to remerge in this use longest PV logic. Uh, which right now is just comparing principal variations based upon score and length of the variation. But there's also this consideration for a uh, number of votes for a variation, and I don't know what that's about. Um, I think that has something to do with the stability of a search. I'm not sure. In fact, that would make some sense. Like, if, um, if a variation ends up being... Uh, strong over a number of depths that are looked at, then that would seem to be the principal variation. Hmm. I'll have to give that some thought. There's probably some more statistics I've got to think about there, but something like that would be useful. Um, um, yeah, so I can probably drop some of these tags here. Um, here, let's drop the category altogether. Um, so let's leave that on. And yeah, we can just hang out for a little bit and discuss software development and just enjoy stuff, right? So does anybody have anything to add or to ask or whatever about uh, Stockfish? Um, yeah. Certainly it's quite strong. I remember Grandmaster Sierra Juan, uh, when we first had him playing against um, Stockfish, I was just blown away that um, such a well-recognized uh, player would be interested or willing or whatever to play against uh, a crazy house engine. Um, and not only would he be willing, but he played so many games against it, too. And continues playing it today. Like, that's amazing to me that um, some 
somebody with so many accolades, like a U.S. Blitz champion so many times over, um, would be willing to uh, take a look at the software and just try it out and see uh, how it plays. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people who'd be curious, I guess, um, but not in the same way that uh, chess base really, or database in general and the internet have had a profound impact on chess. Um, so uh, I should speak to that a bit, I suppose. Why not? We have the time. So um, let's see, do I still have the, you yeah, know, we don't need to have the upper right board continuing throughout all this. Uh, I can disable that. There we go. This probably looks more beautiful, and now you can see both pockets. I apologize for that being hidden earlier. Um, here, let me also move the mic so it's slightly easier to hear me, because I'm sure I'm mumbling a bit. So there we go. Um, so, yeah, uh, so databases and such have strongly impacted uh, players' opening choices and ability to prepare for matches, uh, such as our most recent uh, World Championship. And so you have players who are going into matches having a pretty strong idea of how their player, how their opponents uh, play in general. And the race to find novelties and ideas and strategies and such... Uh, it's quite the race, and it's exciting in its own way that differs from correspondence chess, where there isn't the same level of being able to improvise things as there is uh, over the board. Over the board, if you're playing a game you, uh, and you make a mistake, that doesn't mean the end of the game. Whereas in correspondence, it can often be more fatal than that. Now, wait a second. Am I seeing like a, oh, wow, <laughs> what? Wait, what, how? Oh, I see, this is just a different take on knight e2. I get it. Sorry, I freaked out there. Somehow knight e2 leads to the same position, um, but knight h3 is just a fancier way to do it. I was flipping out because I couldn't calculate that. Um, so yeah, over the board, if you're playing in a championship or other sort of match, you could sort of, um, you could find resources. Whereas if you're making mistakes in correspondence chess, it's much harder uh, to recover from those mistakes. And so the search for novelties is, uh, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so that's, wow. Um, so I think they're estimating a 50-ish rating point gain with this release over the previous release. One of the changes I wanted to make the cut for Crazy House, um, well, first of all, it's still testing, and second of all, it's not looking like it's going to pass on tests, which is unfortunate, um, but that's okay. Not every test is going to be successful. Um, but supposing the test passes, then um, it just means that we've missed out on like five rating points or something for Crazy House, and that's no big deal. We've been making so many advances, mostly thanks to upstream contributions, and thanks to my merging those changes without losing what we'd originally developed for variants. Um, Although this year I've been trying to simplify some of the changes that we made for variants so they're more human intelligible or easily understood as well as um, easier to merge with upstream changes because they're changing things in a more rapid pace this year. Um, okay, so I went on a tangent of a tangent. Um, so how do I get back to where I was? Yeah, so these matches have world-class players um, that certainly use engines for their research. Uh, however, um, 
uh, databases have had a more profound effect, in my opinion, <laughs> as an amateur chess player. It seems to me um, that a database would more greatly influence a grandmaster choice of moves um, than an engine would. Although engines, if you have enough seconds and enough computation power and so forth, you can find novelties. It's much easier to just keep up on your peers' new ideas and evaluate whether those new ideas are for you or not. Um, or better yet than looking at your peers' new ideas, look at um, top grandmasters' new ideas. And there's always some sort of idea that's new. They're still playing the game. They're still going to the tournaments. Everybody's still learning because there's uh, so much to learn. But yeah, I would say that uh, databases certainly have had a very profound effect. I'm not so sure that engines have, but it's really cool to see that Grandmaster Sierra One would play hundreds of games against um, the Stockfish at Crazy House. That just is amazing to me that he'd be so intrigued by it. On the other hand, I too find um, Crazy House intriguing um, as a base for uh, just AI development. Um, and there are so many different AIs that play Crazy House, and they all play it so differently. And then we had new entrant uh, Stockfish on the scene two years ago. Um, and uh, once... Um, I'm sorry, I tried earlier that year to do some sort of implementation and it was not so good. Um, I did not get nearly anywhere with it. I struggled badly and um, got quite skeptical about it. And thankfully, uh, Fabian Fichter um, contributed this amazing patch that implemented um, uh, the remainder of Crazy House. So I code reviewed that, found some move ordering optimizations to build on top of that, and with a pretty bare bones implementation, we had implemented this like godlike Crazy House engine out of Stockfish, where we initially never would have expected that, um, at least I wouldn't. I don't know about uh, Fabian. Um, but I never expected that um, Stockfish would be rated like over 2,000 at Crazy House just from the outset. And there was so much room to expand because Stockfish is such a well-commented code base. Um, so through trial and error, playing against human opposition and engine opposition, uh, we were able to identify some pretty key mistakes that were easily fixed but overall crazy house and chess share quite a bit in terms of piece placement and material value and just how you assess a position and search a tree and that sort of thing in general um, there were some things we had to change about the search algorithm specific to crazy house but they were few and far between and they were extremely difficult to change. Any change is challenging. Um, but, um, yeah, once we had put the changes in place and done ample testing and code review, um, it, it just took off. It was amazing. Um, and the fact that, like, it was trouncing other engines at Crazy House, I never would have guessed. Um, again, maybe Fabian would have, because um, Stockfish is such an excellent basis from which to uh, do such a thing, or a base, but um, yeah, no, I just was completely taken aback, and then seeing it play in the Crazy House Championship uh, hosted by Ferdinand Mosca, um, and seeing it 
actually defeat other engines in a competitive setting like that uh, was pretty extraordinary. Um, yeah, I and to have actually won the first Crazy House Championship outright, I was just floored that that happened. I couldn't believe it. Because um, we had basically started the development October-ish of that year, if I remember right. And it was a frenzy. It was a mad scramble to keep adding new evaluation bonuses and penalties and changing the search a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, but the base of what we had started with with Stockfish was so solid to begin with that pretty much any change that wasn't to the evaluation function um, didn't, or, uh, I don't know. I should look at what we have today with Crazy House and see how that differs from the base, but um yeah making changes not related to the evaluation function were super confusing to make and um not very gainful in terms of rating uh for the most part although i think we found a couple things where we did absolutely need things to be searching differently or something to that effect we've certainly found some edge cases with like memory consumption and hash tables or something that didn't quite work right and caused Stockfish to crash. Um, but having that resolved, we were able to play at a standard time control using this very, very new engine, which we had done ample testing with. But um, yeah, the idea that just a couple developers uh, or a few developers working on that could make such a successful project was just completely crazy. I couldn't believe it uh, that we had managed to defeat engines that had been around for years, if not decades. Um, and it's one thing that um, a genius or somebody with ample free time and interest um, working alone over many, many months can make some successful engine on their own. But um, it's even more incredible that um, a handful of developers working basically in the span of a month were able to make uh, the world champion chess crazy house engine. Could not believe it. It's still amazing to me today. I should go back and look over uh, what we committed specifically during those days, but those were our contributions uh, to... Um, the crazy house chess community, I guess. And um, what well, I guess what first intrigued me about Stockfish, uh, since, uh, well, how do I say this? Sorry, I didn't have this prepared. Um, yeah, what first intrigued me is that oh, I could take this wonderful open source engine, and I could make it do things other than its original purpose. Uh, because it is open source, because it's got a very permissive license that allows me to do this, and this can provide greater insights that may be of some instructional value, or might not be, who knows, but um, quite a few players have found it beneficial to have the engine analyze not only their standard chess games, but also uh, their variant games. Um, now there is a cost for implementing all these other variants inside the engine, some of which um, are disabled at compile time uh, by Lee Chess because they are not hosted. At, these variants do not run on the Chess site. Um, um, but yeah, I thought it would be useful to be able to analyze variant games and use this as a tool to um, learn just I don't know, more about the engine in general, how it evaluates positions. Um, also to learn more about, um, well, I say about how it an analyzes the positions, but also like how to interpret these evaluations 
under different fields like create uh, standard chess and chess 960 are two different games that evaluate things slightly differently not much um, but I'd hoped more so that um, by freeing people to play against AIs in variants that you know even if uh, standard chess is too much for a person to understand or if they're getting bored of chess and want to take a look at things from a different perspective and they could play something like King of the Hill or Horde Chess or uh, Three Check or something like that where uh, the rules are different and you could play against somebody who's a chess expert or a master and you could still have some chance of winning it. Or you could take a look at experts and such who have played these um, variants and see how do they play this differently than a normal chess game what things need to be considered about chess pieces in general and are there any rules which are dogmatic for one variant but not for another um like i don't know if you have trouble keeping your king protected maybe king of the hill is for you because then you just some cases you can run your king to the center of the board to escape an attack and oh suddenly you're winning the game so it forces your opponent to hold back a lot more. Um, so I keep going on a tangent of a tangent. I'm trying to get back to my original subject while being entertaining. Um, so I forget if I stated this earlier. Um, the uh, This being the uh, Stockfish's 10th anniversary, um, I would like, it'd be very awesome if the developers of Stockfish could comment um, on their history. And I would hope that Lee Chess could uh, feature those as blog entries or something. Um, if one or more authors were interested in writing I think there's certainly room on the blog for such a post. If not, um, I guess I'd be glad to chronicle what I've done, but what they've done is so much more interesting in my mind. Um, that, that's just my take. Um, so I'm trying to think what else I can add here. Sorry, I keep wandering all over the place, but... Yeah, it's been a very interesting project working um, with uh, Lee Chess developers as they have time to contribute to this. Working with uh, Fabian Fichter, who has um, also gone on to form his own fork of my fork, of uh, the official Stockfish fork, uh, which was forked from Marco Castalba's uh, version, where he had uh, forked from Glaurung, um, developed by Tord Romstad, uh, which I believe was a initial development effort that was not forked from something else. But you know, we're like five levels deep here. Um, and there's just been such a tremendous community working on so many different collaborative efforts. Um, and it's been wonderful working uh, with uh, other developers and as well as with the Lee Chess team. Um, I mean, of which I'm a developer because I have contributed some patches as well as, as well as a ton of feedback about just my own opinions about how to make the site good for teaching, uh, good for playing, and positive experience overall. Um, I've full of opinions about chess, but um, yeah, the Lee Chess team makes things happen. Um, slowly but surely, but um, with some things, but often very quickly with others. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been wonderful working with them. They've been very useful, very helpful. Um, in deploying all these Stockfish changes to uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, 
as well as to WebAssembly and uh, portable native client and all those other technologies that run in browsers, um, as well as just the engine pool that they have for analysis and uh, the fish net, they call it, the distributed analysis network. Um, it's just amazing all the things they put together. And I'm glad to contribute to it too. Um, not that I have a PC constantly running for that purpose, because mine's constantly running tests, trying to improve Stockfish. Um, but I'm glad to contribute code sometimes when it makes sense for me to do so, or is useful to them that I do so. Often it isn't, but you know sometimes I have a good idea here or there. Um, but yeah, they've also just discussing technology with fellow developers has been exciting. Um, it's funny they call uh, Thibaut uh, the Git Doctor. <laughs> I remember like we had a point at which um, not very many of us knew Git that well, and so if you foobarred your development branch of Leechus. Uh, he'd be able to get things sorted out if you were trying to submit a patch. Um, these days, I think he just give more general advice and other developers would be able to assist with that sort of thing. But it was pretty funny um, when he would uh, he'd work his magic and you'd be like, oh my goodness, how does he know this stuff? It's their experience. You learn things, especially when collaborating with other people. And Stockfish has been a wonderful collaborative effort. Um, I mean, yeah, given unlimited time and budget and such, I would have all kinds of other ideas for how to improve chess uh, playing and teaching and other tools. Uh, I've got tons of things that eventually would be cool to implement. Um, but I recognize that, like... Um, Resources are always limited in some sense, um, the most limited of which being time, I think, um, where you just can't expect that other people are going to give their time completely freely. They're going to have real-life obligations. They can't just devote their entire lives to implementing things that you suggest. So if you want to be a, or be the change you want to see in the world, they say, um, not saying that that's practical always, and sometimes you have to recognize that there are some things that just can't feasibly be done, no matter how cool the ideas are. You just have to put them on a list or a back burner somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, the Leech Chess team has done so many wonderful things. In my mind, the most interesting of which uh, has been this ability to learn from your mistake. Uh, so if I could load that up, so you see here we got the analysis engine running with uh, Stockfish. Um, I think I forget. I think the I'm sorry, it's the gameplay where you're playing against AI level eight, but that's hosted on OVH, not too far from the Leech S server. Obviously, my bot's hosted in its own place. Um, but here you can like click learn from your mistakes. In my mind, this is like the coolest thing on Leech Us. Um, <laughs> no mistakes found for black. Let's review white's mistakes. And so here it points out this is the move that was played bishop h6. Find a better move for white. Um, so yeah, I find this really cool. Um, and what's great about this is that. Like this is like if you were to apply this to your own over the board games, if there was some way to do that, that would be replicating the technique that I used to get to like seventeen or eighteen hundred US chess rating points, whatever. You could get very far uh just learning from your own mistakes. Uh even if you struggle absorbing other things, just identifying common things that you miss as a both positive and negative is very important. Um, 
and this feature just highlights your most critical errors. Um, some of which could be inaccuracies, some of which could be blunders. This uses a special formula um, that very strongly correlates with a player's chances of winning the game. Um, so that when you have like a score that jumps from 0 to minus 3, okay, that's a big deal. But also like going from plus 1 to minus 1 or something like that is a big deal. Um, there's a formula that like does the logarithm or some, it takes some, I think it, I forget if it's an S curve or a logistic growth curve or whatever. Um, I think it's an S curve. Yeah, uh, that scales these evaluation functions and then does a linear regression and focuses on just which moves most impacted the play of the game. Um, now, oftentimes these will be silly blunders, especially in a um, such a tactic heavy or calculation heavy variant as Crazy House. This can be uh, quite difficult. Um, here, Bishop H6 ended up just uh, losing the initiative outright. It seems very well motivated, but I'm curious, like, if I were to play, like, Queen G4 or Bishop G5 or something like that, that wouldn't achieve the... Uh, I'm sorry, this is Bishop at H6, not Bishop to H6, but there's still ways to improve upon this attack. Uh, in Crazy House, often F6, the pawn lever, can... Um, uh, greatly impact the strength of an attack. So, yeah, I'm curious, like, how do we break through this? It doesn't seem that white has enough material in hand to do it. Also, it seems like knight takes d5 might be useful. So this evaluates my move and then says, no, that's not quite it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can see the evaluation at minus 3 and saying, you know, that's probably not it. You can do better. So you can either try again, um, which I will. This is going to be painful because I'm not terribly good at Crazy House, but um, Green G4 seemed very tempting to me. It's not sufficient. Oh, the other thing about this is that um, while it does point out your mistake, you don't have to find the best move. You just have to find a good move. Um, so that's something that pertains to chess in general. Um, that if you can find a good move, generally that's good enough. You don't need to find the best move in every position, you just need to find uh, a satisfactory move. Um, okay, so yeah, bishop at g5 was sufficient. However, just taking time out to protect the e-pawn ends up being okay here, despite the fact that the bishop covers this diagonal. And how does this end up being okay? Well, you play bishop f1. And your king is going to get to safety uh, after this exchange. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see now why the evaluation was equal. Um, yeah, so the best move involves this infinite exchange of bishops that prevents your king from running into the corner. Um, but if not for that, you'd have really amazing position here just playing d4. Um, so it's unfortunate that there is that resource. Pawn g7 ends up being too slow in this position. Uh, I am tempted to think you just take the rook and try a fork or something. But maybe there's something else here. Um, can I just like d4? No, d4 opens a hole in my position. Uh, can I take the rook? No, because that's not nearly enough here. Uh, can I snap d5? Is that the idea? That's not at all the idea of what's going on here. It's a nice try, but no. Um, yeah, I'm stumped. I feel ashamed that I'm failing two moves in a row here. Um, there's got to be some solution, so let's view it. f4 is the best move. So I tried d4, d4 just weakens your king too much. But f4 is a queen sack after uh, bishop g4. 
Oh, I'm sorry, it's not a queen stack. You actually retain the queen and allow black to start attacking for a little bit. Um, and you just run away. And black has no knights, so you're actually okay. He's got no rooks, he's got no knights. You still have this threat to take the rook, but you're not actually going to take it. Because the threat's stronger than the execution here. Instead, you're just going to um, use your knights... Uh, to hunt down the king. Um, and that's not very well described, but um, once you put the pawn on g7, this gives black opportunity to pick which squares he's going to defend and how he can run away from it. But if you leave this open, you could always like eventually get a rook over here or find some way to combine your knights and pawn together to uh, cover more squares and choke black on space, and once black is completely choked on space, uh, then you start mopping up material, and then you go in for the kill. Uh, crazy house is hard. Like, most humans would not be comfortable defending this, and this is really counterintuitive, but there's something going on here. Um, so, like, yeah, there... Oh, sorry. Here's the pre-calculated analysis that was done server-side. Uh, even stronger than what I did locally here. So pawn f3, you take the knight, he takes g2, and this is confusing stuff. Uh, you take the rook, you threaten the queen, queen wants to keep cover of the dark squares, otherwise the king starts running forward and that's no good. Um, and yeah, I mean, you look at all these holes here, and um, white's got everything just barely covered. Uh, so this is the most efficient structure white can manage here. I'm not so convinced about knight takes e5 because, oh, we don't have a bishop. Because otherwise the bishop could like hit the queen and such. Uh, but yeah. Um, so if I go back, are there still games in progress here? Or is that that? That's that with, okay. But yeah. Um, so that's just an example of um, uh, bots playing on Lee Chess, or my crazy house. Stockfish playing there. Obviously plays all the other variants that are hosted on the site. It has ratings in each of those categories. It's willing to play both casual or rated games, or and whatever. It'll play against anybody. It's welcome. To, it's just having a fun time. Uh, but that hasn't gotten to our other key story, and that's just that Leela Chess Zero is still under development and still improving. Um, and as much as Alpha Zero um, has changed how uh, public perceives um, that engines analyze positions and such, um, and that it got trained from scratch, it didn't have an evaluation function other than uh, one that takes a win, score, scores a win as a point, scores a loss as a negative point or zero points or whatever, and it tries to maximize the number of points it scores and tries to win. Um, so other than um, other than that information, uh, it's learned on its own how best to play chess. But Leela Chess Zero has taken that. Uh, information and popularized it or uh, vulgarized it or whatever the term is that says that the public now has access to the same or very similar machine learning tools as the one provided by Google. And that's kind of funny. Uh, a great deal of Leela Chess Zero was tested in Google's cloud platform engine so I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what trends Google was looking for while all those engines were training on their own platform, or all those instances of Leela Chess were, uh, were training on the Google Cloud. Um, I don't know what information, if anything, Google gathered from that. Uh, I doubt that they fed that directly into their engine in any direct way, but they probably looked at the development of a Leela Chess Zero engine and be foolish not to. 
Um, and uh, look forward to seeing more games from Alpha Zero because the games themselves are interesting. Um, I'm guessing the engine, the learning technology is proprietary, which is unfortunate for us, the curious public. Um, but it's good that public curiosity is so high about machine intelligence or artificial intelligence. Um, but yeah, people love playing against Stockfish, so. Uh, I don't really know that I have much other of a point than that. So we're just going to celebrate the fact that Stockfish 10 is released, um, that we are in the process of deploying that on Leechess, um, and that I'll continue doing development on multivariant Stockfish um, for the foreseeable future. I'll still be on it. So that's good. Um, it's one heck of an effort to keep up with all the code merges and such, but... Um, oh no, <laughs> oh boy, it broke, um, well that's exciting, let's see, wow, okay, so it had white that last game and it didn't play a move, uh, let me check out what's going on here, um, so it didn't move the previous game, uh, it is moving this game. Let's see, last game it attempted to... wait. Remote end closed connection without response. I mean, my bot has recovered from this, but that's concerning. Um, how could that have happened? So, that was just a few minutes ago. Yeah, um... I'm seeing four connection aborted messages in a row from Lee Chess. And my bot managed to get back online afterward. Uh, so Lee Chess dropped my connection several times. Um, and then like six hours prior, it says remote end close connection without response. That might have been me closing Lee Chess, or closing my bot that connects to the Leechess API in order to upgrade it. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that it there's four messages that say that Leechess dropped the connection or that the remote end closed the connection without a response. Um, regardless, it seems to have come back online. But yeah, four messages in the last hour to that effect is most unfortunate. Um, I'll have to see what's going on, uh, or rather ask them what's going on with that. It could just be my bot, it could be something else, I don't know. Um, I doubt that it's something on my end, but it could be. I can't rule out the possibility because I've only hosted my bot in one place instead of lots of places. Oh boy. Oh boy. That feeling when you've got all the material in hand and yet like victory seems an infinite distance away. Yeah, that hurts. I've been there. Oh, there's the salt in the wound. Oh dear. Oh, okay. Stockfish has run out of pawn. Oh. Wow. Wow! Nicely played, Stockfish. And, okay. Uh, very well played by both contestants or players here. That's quite extraordinary. I don't know that any person would have conducted this attack with that kind of precision. Um, okay, Bishop F1 is unfortunate, but what are you going to do anyway? I mean, this is dead. The f uh, don't get hung up on the annotations here. Um, um, because this annotation engine is different than the learn from your mistakes engine. Um, but yeah, it's that was one heck of an attack. And you should see, like, when it's playing against um, Immortal, Ferdinand Mosca's engine, 
the wonderful like 20 move combinations that show up in a game or it just slowly encroaches um, upon the opponent's position strangles all the opponent's pieces and then goes in and just wins an exchange or something and then eventually builds up enough material to go in for the mating attack is just completely nuts to me um oh so earlier about an hour ago somebody had talked about a uh, crazy ara um the neural network uh chess engine that was trained much the same way as Leela chess zero i think that's a quite interesting development as well and i would like to see um i don't know a lot of things i would like to see that play against stockfish I'd like to see a Crazy House AI tournament um, sometime this winter. So it would be exceptional uh, if anybody would host that. Because I'm pretty sure I would lose my mind trying to host that and keep up with all my other responsibilities. But um, somehow some... Uh, and... Yeah... Maybe we could convince, uh, I don't know. I mean, if Lee Chess won't do it, we could always reach out to, like, chess.com or somebody else and ask them, could you please host this competition, because this could be a lot of fun. Um, but also, uh, if Ferdinand would be willing, uh, by all means, I would jump on that in a heartbeat, that just submitting my engine and allowing it to compete in that competition or during the champion phase or whatever or even if it's just like a best of the top eight round robin or double round robin or whatever i don't care getting any kind of um competition going with all sorts of crazy house ais sounds super exciting to me I forget, do I have the ability to star games? Yeah, I can star things from the TV. There was some other perspective, some other like TV or something I was unable to uh, hit the bookmark star icon from. But at least from this TV view, I can select an individual game if I think it was of uh, very high quality or very memorable in some other aspect. I could star it um, for future uh, analysis or nostalgia or whatever. Um, so, yeah, like I said, um, I know time is a valuable resource for everybody. Um, and with that said, we've been doing this for about three hours here. Three, right? Yeah. Without, pretty much without a break in the commentary, other than my mumblings, um, as I struggle to come up with, uh, interesting things to say. Um, or just struggle to recall all the fascinating details of this rather long journey. So, perhaps I wrap things up saying, um, happy birthday, Stockfish. It's been ten wonderful years. We've learned a lot. Um, I was first really aware of the, uh, this engine... I don't know, about 2002, 2003, I think. No, I'm sorry, 2012 or so. Um, this is brought to my attention. I was curious what it was. And it is a wonderful open source engine. And at the time, it hadn't occurred to me what a wonderful contribution that was. Just in the sense that, um, okay, yeah, it was very competitive. And there were lots of very high-rated engines at the time, so I didn't think much of that at the time. I had not probed into the code to just look at um, what a marvelous effort had been made with the code itself to make it very easy to understand. Um, so yeah, if you make... I wouldn't claim that any code is self-documenting, um, but if you make software easy to use and easy to understand, it will 
um, gain the support uh, the support of the open source community as a, as well as many users. Um, as if you have an army of developers waiting to support your software and experiment with it, uh, you could likewise find many people who are interested in um, using the software in many cases because usually there's a pretty big overlap between users and developers um, for very well developed well commented well designed software everybody wants it to serve a slightly different purpose and so they're able to take the code make their enhancements to it uh, it can fulfill their purposes as well as its core purpose and some of the more savvy the developers can submit their changes and or talk about what they did and recommend that such changes be made into the master branch at some point or into some fork of the project um, and so that's how software uh, evolves in an open source community is that um, with excellent support and documentation and such um, great things can be accomplished uh, so credit goes to uh, the Stockfish development team further credit goes to GNU um, so even as uh, people rile against Linux rile? I'm missing a word rail? I, I'm missing a word here there's a word um, as people men observe that the Linux Foundation is becoming increasingly corporate um, as that phenomenon is going on uh, GNU still remains free and open source and um, I mean yes Linux is also free just not in the same sense that Stallman would call free um, I think Stallman has it right and so it's just wonderful that that ecosystem is still its own thing and can continue to be so. Uh, so that's excellent. Um, kudos to Stallman for keeping the ship upright um, and for having such foresight in the first place. The software can be fun to use and fun to develop and useful at the same time. Um, Certainly Linux is useful, um, but uh, I don't know, it's it's incredible that uh, just what the GNU uh, Foundation was able to support, both legally and developmentally. Uh, so thanks to them for making uh, Linux possible, um, or practical, or whatever. Uh, as well as thanks to them for making um, GNU Auto Tools, and which allow developers to easily develop and troubleshoot software. So, all sorts of credit has to be given for that. It's an extraordinary achievement, and without that, Stockfish would not be here today. So, um, I could ramble, but uh, really, I think it'd be excellent. Um, to hear, I'm sure at some point, authors of Stockfish will be asked more about it. Whether an interview, like maybe the Perpetual Chess Podcast, might contact some of the developers and talk, ask them questions about it, uh, about Stockfish from inception to Stockfish 10 and beyond, or uh, perhaps um, other circumstances will warrant um, discussion of it. Uh, who knows, right? But, um, but yeah, that certainly tons of credit goes to the open source community for making all these things possible. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just glad to be riding the wave and making the chess ecosystem a better place for players and people interested in learning the game alike. Um, so I don't know that I have much more to add right now other than happy 10th birthday anniversary whatever uh, Stockfish it's been wonderful and uh, thanks to OK for playing some games against uh, Stockfish here uh, just giving me a chance to uh, put some thoughts out there 
So, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that note. Um, thanks for watching. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, go support your open source community and developers and such. Um, also go support like all these special leagues for this 4545 team and the crazy house um, chess players who have their streaming group and their championship crazy house teams and all these things. There's a lot of resources out there if you want to learn to play better. Um, so go be out there, participate in the forums, participate in the Lee Chess Discord, talk with people, collaborate, help other people, etc. Have some goals, um, not just after the first of the year, but try building some goals right now. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. It's been fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good night.